All right, so in the previous video, we installed Backtrader, we instantiated this Cerebro object, and gave the broker attribute an initial cash balance of a million dollars. And we displayed the starting portfolio val value, and we ran our program and displayed the final portfolio value. So this value didn't change because we didn't yet give our program really anything to do with this amount of money. So what we need to do next is provide two things. First, we need to provide data for which uh, Backtrader needs to operate on. And secondly, we need to give it a trading strategy so that it knows what to do with this information. So let's start with the data feed. So if you look up GitHub Backtrader, you'll find this repository. And it has a few examples of data and we can download this. And let's just do the one from the Backtrader example program just to make sure we're on the same page and that it our results match theirs. So they use this Oracle data set from uh, Oracle, stock, Oracle stock from 1995 through 2014. So I'm just gonna download the raw data set there and I can paste this into a new text file. So I'll call it uh, oracle.csv and I'm just gonna paste that in and save the file. And so a data feed, all it really needs to have is a date and then you have this OHLC, open, high, low, close. And these for, for, um, these form, uh, they call them lines of data. So there's a, a line that forms a series of opens, a series of highs, a series of lows, and a series of closes. And based on these lines of data and their changes over time, uh, we can make decisions based on uh, these data changes. So uh, we have a data set here to operate on and I've saved it to a CSV file. And so next we need to uh, use the Backtrader objects uh, to provide a data feed. So you'll notice in the doc documentation, uh, there's these uh, data feed sources. And so there's a variety of ways to feed data um, into Backtrader, but there's one called Data Feeds Yahoo. And you can use that. Um, and if you don't want to use Oracle stock here, you can actually go to Yahoo Finance. So uh, finance.yahoo.com. And if you search for something like Apple, for instance. Um, if you want to use your own data set, uh, you can grab one, uh, you can click historical data here, and then you can use this time period here, so like five years or whatever time period you're interested in backtesting against, and click download data, and then you'll get this nice CSV file as well. And so you can feed this CSV file um, into Backtrader if you'd like. So for right now, I'm using this Oracle data set uh, that has opening closing prices uh, for 1995 through the year 2014. So how do we feed that data in? Well, if you look at the quick start guide here, you'll find there's a CSV data class here. And so I'll do data, data equals backtrader.feeds.yahoofinance CSV data, and you pass it a file name or the path to the file. Since ours is in the same directory, we can just type oracle.csv. And then we can give it some filters. These are optional here. Um, so you might not want to analyze 20 years of data. So if you don't want 20 years of data, you can filter and use date time objects to specify, I want to start the year, uh, the day January 1st, 2000 through December 31st, 2000. And so I need to make sure I import date time. That looks good. And let me change my indentation. Okay. So once that is done, we have a data feed. So once we have this data feed, we need to connect it to Cerebro. So we'll do Cerebro dot add data, add data. And then we just pass it data just like that. And now it's connected. And if we run that, we'll make sure it still runs. Okay, so the data is connected. And so now we actually need a strategy to execute on this data. So uh, Backtrader is able to read through uh, this file uh, line by line and go through each of the bars or the dates in order. And now it needs to make decisions and backtest against this data. So let's give it a strategy. So I'm gonna make a new file called strategies.py. And then, so the first strategy we're gonna use, we'll just do the one from the quick start example. So there's one called test strategy, and I'm just gonna copy this straight up. So there's a class called test strategy. And since we have, we, we're gonna try out multiple strategies. So this is the first one. So I'm separating this into a new file and we'll put a few classes in here for different strategies. So this one's called test strategy. And let me import backtrader here. And so we're gonna do test strategy. And every strategy you make needs to extend this base strategy class. 
and that has uh, the base methods and uh, information needed in order to define a strategy. And so we're overriding a few methods here. So uh, when we initialize it, uh, we're saving a reference to the closing, uh, the closing line. And then we're writing this next method here. Um, and then we're logging the output as we go through the days uh, so that we can show when uh, buy messages or we'll log a message whenever a, a stock gets bought. And then we'll later uh, log whenever we sell the asset. So in this next method, method here, you see we're logging the close um, from our data set as it goes through line by line. So it goes to the next date, the next date, the next date, um, and then tells us what the close is. And then in this next method, we can define uh, when we want to actually execute a buy. So the first strategy uh, we're, we're running here is to just, it's basically just buying a slight dip. So we're going to see what would happen if um, the price of a stock went down two days in a row and we bought the dip and then we held it for X number of days and sold it immediately after that. And so we're going to see the outcome of that. So what we're doing here is we're checking um, the indexes here. So the way this works is the zeroth index is the current day it's looking at. And then you can access the previous days by using negative indexing. So the same way in Python, if you have an array that has several values, right? Um, you can use zero indexing, but you can do negative one to go back a couple of days. So I can, the negative one index is four, the negative two index is three and so forth. So if you want to look at the previous day's close, you just see, see if the current day's close is less than data close negative one. So that'll see if the current close is less than the previous day's close. And then we can take it one step further and see if the previous day's close is next to the previous close before that. So we'll do data close negative one is less than data close negative two. And if that's the case, then we got a slight dip for a couple days and we're going to have our uh, have back trader execute a buy. So we're going to log buy create. We're going to log what the price where we executed at. And then we're calling the buy method. So that's the strategy. And now we need to connect it to Cerebro. So now from strategies, I'm just going to import our test strategy. And then the same way we add data to Cerebro, we need to add the strategy. So there's a add strategy method. And then we just pass it a strategy, which is just the class for that strategy. And then we're going to run that and see what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to run it. And you see, it went through all of the days from the year 2000. And you see the prices and you can see when it executes buys. So this looks like around the time of like the dot com, you know, bubble and then collapse. So you can see there was some pretty significant uh, volatility here. So you see it starts January 3rd. And so it's 2627. It goes down, it goes down again. And our program says, hey, uh, let, let's issue a buy since this current day's close is less than the previous one and it's and that one is less than the previous one. So there's a two day dip. Uh, we issue a buy and it logs it. And then uh, we continue every time that happens, we keep issuing buys and start accumulating a portfolio. And then at the very end of our program here, you can see our final portfolio value and it's actually went down in value. So why is that? Why is our final portfolio less now? Well, we haven't actually finished programming our trading strategy yet. We've issued some buy commands whenever the price of the stock dipped a little bit, but we didn't actually issue any of our sell conditions. So we also need to tell BackTrader at what point to sell Oracle stock. So um, in the next video, I'm going to cover how to actually issue the sell commands, uh, monitor the status of our trades and also how to change our position size to buy more than one share and set commissions and add a lot of other settings to complete out our strategy. And then we'll also use uh, the plotting that's built in uh, to plot out our strategy. And you'll see we actually will make a little bit of money from this, um, but it's not the best strategy, but it's a, an easy one to get started with and get uh, an understanding of how Backtrader works. So stay tuned for the next video and we'll finish this up. Thanks.